Today we want to look at doing more division with decimals, but instead of dividing by integers, let's look at dividing by decimals. How do we handle dividing by decimals? You may remember how to do this, but I want to make sure you understand why we do the things that we do here. Okay. If I were to look at this guy as a fraction, as 2.4 divided by 0 0.3, and I can do this, and there's no problem with me looking at it that way. We have seen with decimals, or excuse me, we've seen with fractions that we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator times the same number, right? Because if I were to take this guy and multiply this times 10 over 10, is that, can, can I do that? And what's 10 over 10? It's just 1, so if I multiply this times 1, does it change its meaning? Okay, the answer there is no. It doesn't change its meaning. So, but notice what happens here when I do this. If I multiply a number, a decimal times 10, that just moves the decimal one spot to the right. For every 0 that you have for that power of 10, that's how many places you would move the decimal. So this guy would become 24. You can see by multiplying times 10, it moves that decimal one spot to the right. Multiplying 0.3 times 10 would also move that one spot to the right. So 2.4 divided by 0.3 is really the same as 24 divided by 3. So the answer here would just be 8. Now, when we set this up in a long division format, this is typically what we have seen. This is what we've done in the past. So when I do this division, you may have been taught to do this. Move the decimal until you have a whole number there, right, to make it 3. But however many decimal places you move this is how many decimal places you move the decimal point on the dividend. So now what you really have is a decimal that's situated right here after the 4. If we go ahead and move that up to the top, we know exactly where it is. Does 3 go into 2? Nope. Negative, Ghost Rider. Does 3 go into 24? Yes. 8 times, 8 times 3 is 24, remainder of 0, and you still get the same answer. Okay. But I want you to see the reason why we've done that in the past is because you're really multiplying times the power of 10 to scoot that decimal over. And if you do it for the divisor, you also have to do it to the dividend. Okay? That's why we do that. It's, it, I don't want it to be a mystery to you. Okay? One question. Sure. Uh, why did you say it didn't change the meaning? Multiply by 10. I didn't multiply times 10. You said, why does it not change? Why did I say it doesn't change the meaning? Because I didn't multiply times 10. I multiply times 10 over 10. What does 10 over 10 equal? I can multiply anything that I want to times 1, and it won't change its meaning. That's how we were able to get common denominators in the last chapter. Right? You make it look different to help you out. There are certain things that you have control over, right? And so if we learn how to manipulate that appropriately, then it's better for us. Just like I could, I could take a $20 bill and I could exchange it for $21 bills, right? It may look different, but the meaning is still the same, right? But, and we may exchange it out that way because the $1 bills may be more useful to us. I remember growing up and it was all about the $1 bills because you had to have lunch money. Of course, when I was growing up, lunches cost a dollar and twenty cents. Those were the good days. Get double lunches, so two dollars and forty cents got you two. I'll use air quotes for the hamburgers, um, and two milks. Good days. That's why I look the way I do now. You just had to be there. All right. So if I have 3.51 divided by 0 
1, 2. How would you do this division? Say again? Divide by 100. Divide. Well, if, if, if I set up the division correctly, what goes on the outside? Where's my neat piece of paper? The, right, the 0 0.12 goes on the outside. So just like we were doing before, just have some nice guidelines here. So we have the... 0 0.12 on the outside, and the dividend goes on the inside. That's 3.51. I don't want to divide by a decimal, so what did I do? We move it to the end so we have a nice whole number, right? Now, how many decimal places did I move this? And what I effectively did is that I multiplied this times 100 because it moved two decimal places. So it means I have to do the same thing to this guy, which means what? I move this guy two decimal places as well. And so that means my new decimal point is going to be right here. Okay. So now, don't worry about the decimals. You have your decimal spoken for. Okay. Now you just do the division. Does 12 go into 3? No, and yeah, maybe this would help you if you saw it this way. Does 12 go into 3? We say no, and you may even put a small little x here knowing that <coughs> excuse me, nothing goes above that guy. What about 35? Does 12 go into 35? Yes. How many times? It only goes in here two times. So I'm going to do the 2 times the 12. I subtract 24, and I end up with what? 11. Notice that down here, you are never worrying about decimals. The decimal point, I already told you, is spoken for in your answer up here on the top. So, scoot over again and bring down the 1, just like we did the other day. Now, we know that 12 goes into 111, but the question is how many times? This is where your multiplication tables are super handy. I'll give you a hint. It's a number between 5 and 26. Nine, very good. That's the number I was thinking of. I sure, now this is one of those times when I hope that on your phone that you're texting and not using the calculator. I was clearing it so it didn't buzz again. I'm okay. Not, not okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> nine times. I'm saying how calculator takes more time. Well, you said that. Nine times 12 <laughs> is what? <laughs> it's 108. And then 111 minus 108, finally get back to smaller numbers so we can be happy, right? So we have a remainder of 3. So do I, do I just put 29R3 up here? No. S silly billies. we got to keep on going. <laughs> so there's my 0. So how many times does 12 go into 30? All right, now we're cooking. You can smell it. You can't see. Open your... Oh, never mind. <laughs> so 30 minus 24 gives me 6. Let's put another 0 here and bring that down. What do we have? That's 60, and then 12 goes into 60. Five times. Now we have a remainder of 0, so we're happy, right? Are you happy? Now, here's what I need you guys to see and understand here. Now, I know I'm using a calculator a little bit sooner than I should, but this is for illustration purposes only. I maintain that this answer right here is the same as if you had taken what we see right here. When I scooted the decimals over, this should be the same as 351 divided by 12. I maintain that those problems, although they look a little bit different, give you the same answer. 
because I basically multiplied the top and the bottom of the denom uh, top and the bottom of the fraction by 100. So if I look at my calculator, so 3.51 divided by 0.12, I get 29.25. And if I do it without the decimals, because I'd scooted them over, and I do 351 divided by 12, we still get 29.25. Okay. Now, please understand that when I scooted the decimal over, it doesn't disappear. You see here that it just got scooted over two spots, and it goes straight up there. Don't lose your decimal point. You lose your decimal you lose your points.